My name is Dana. This is Abdullahi and that is Navea. We are all in the fourth grade. This is our second year working with Ms. Wong in our hydroponics lab, and we would like to share with you what we learned in our experience in the lab. Ms. Wong wanted to teach us about STEM. In case you don't know what that means, it's an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Our project this year was to design and build a hydroponic system. At first, I felt it was going to be hard, but it turned out to be fun and I was able to be creative. We were also able to choose, grow, and observe our plants while we were building our systems. In order for us to start our project, we learned about the engineering design process. These are the steps you take in order to build something. They are identify a problem, brainstorm, design, build, test and evaluate. Sometimes you have to redesign if something doesn't work. Then you test again. Finally, you present your project and share with others. Now we'll have Abdullahi talk about the first step. The first step in the design process is to identify the problem. There really wasn't a problem in this case, but Ms. Wong presented us with a task to design and build a hydroponic system. Following the process, the next step is to brainstorm. That means to think about what you are going to do and conduct research about the topic. To do this, we went on a field trip to the Cooper Howard Design Museum to learn about design in the past, what it's like now, and what it will be like in the future. We saw a 3D printer, and in my opinion, it's going to change the world. In our research, Ms. Wong taught us about the seven different types of hydroponic systems and then asked us to explain it. From the most simple to the most complex, we have the wick system, water culture, aquaponics, flood and drain, the drip system, NFT, which stands for nutrient film technique, and finally, aeroponics. It sounds complicated, but the only major difference in all these systems is how the plant gets its water. I chose to build a wake system. The way it works is pretty simple. First, you need a reservoir, which holds the water. Then you will need a wick, something that absorbs the water and takes it up to the plant's roots. As you can see, you will need a grow tray for the plants to rest. You can include an air pump, which provides more air to the water and the plants, but we use the straw instead. Nave will now talk more about the next few steps. My team and I chose to build an aquaponic system. The difference between the systems, again, is just how the plants get its water. Here, they float on a platform and the plants absorb the water directly from its roots. Before we could start to build, we had to sketch a diagram of the system in our design log. We then had to think about and choose the materials we needed in order for us to build the system. For instance, we had to look for something that floats in order for us to build the platform. As we started to build, I realized that the reservoir I used was too small for fish. So I decided to build a wick system instead. I had to train my plants and redesign a new system. As Abdullahi mentioned before, in a wick system, you needed something that absorbs water. I used a sponge as the wick. I also needed something to hold my plant, so I used a plastic cup. Ms. Wong drilled the hole in the bottom so that the sponge can fit through. Finally, I used a straw to blow bubbles into the water, giving air to the plant. When I was all done, I presented my system to the class and bought it home to show my family. They were so proud of me. Now was our second year STEM program in Ms. Wallace Hydroponic Farm class. I learned a lot and had an amazing time. On behalf of us three in our school, we would like to thank New York Sunwork for inviting us here to share our experience with you all. And don't forget to like our Facebook farm page and follow us on Instagram to see what's happening in the hydroponic lab now.